Hi, I'm Tom Rowland and welcome to my yard near Sarancester. It's a really cold day today, so I'm with Possible Mission, who's worked well and is now under the lights of the solarium that's warming up. We're in the middle of our badminton preparation with 12 weeks to go. So far, so good. He feels in good form, so just taking it one day at a time. Tom, how's your success at Burley last year boosted your confidence heading into badminton this year? I think it actually really has. What's given me the most confidence is knowing that he can perform in the crowds. He can be a bit of a spooky horse, but actually having the crowds and the clapping and the buzz seem to really give him a little bit of extra sparkle. So I feel like coming into badminton, he's come out of Burley very, very well. Um, I know he's going to perform in front of the crowd. And there is a little bit of a saying that you don't really know if you've got a four-star horse until they've gone a second time round. So I'm hoping you know, at the moment he feels full of confidence and I would see no reason why he hopefully won't feel the same at badminton. This is your first badminton. How do you think the course will suit Fanta? I think for him, it should suit him really well, possibly more so than Burley, which is really hilly and very undulating. And actually, Burley was quite twisty. I think badminton might be a little bit more open this year. I have heard Eric Winter, the course designer, was at Hartwood the other day, telling everyone that he's built the biggest course yet. So we'll see. But he's touch wood, normally quite a good water jumper. And I don't actually think the Vicarage V is going to be in it this year, which I was a bit disappointed about because he's normally a very reliable ditch jumper. But I would probably say that, to be honest, hopefully, badminton might actually suit him better than Burley. The big thing I'm going to be aiming for is a slightly quicker cross-country round, taking a little bit um, more of a risk in places, not going crazy, obviously, but calculated risks, hopefully coming a bit closer for time this year. Who will you be training with in the run-up to badminton? Well, conveniently, my dressage trainer who made the trip up to Burley is also going to be at badminton, and that is Pammy Hutton. She's just down the road from here, so I've been schooling with her quite a lot this winter. We've had some snow, so it's been a great chance to get into her indoor school under her eye. She's always regenerative her time, and of course, she will also be commentating for Radio Badminton. Um, I'll continue going to Roland Fernieho, who's quite local as well, and helps me and knows Hunter very well in the show jumping. Uh, he's just down in Gloucester, and Hunter has already jumped this winter at Hartbury and uh, Summerhouse. And he'll also carry on some BFJ at places like Wellington, Cherwell and Addington. The show jumping is probably his weakest phase, so we do quite a lot of practicing, both um, training at home and also jumping around the course. And also on the 19th and 20th of March, I'm going up to Chris Barkins for two days training. And that hopefully is going to be really helpful. Chris has helped me a lot with finding the key to his strength across country and really change my position. So looking forward to going there for a training trip as well. Who will you walk the course with and how many times do you anticipate on walking it? Um, well, I'll definitely be walking the course with Chris Bartle. He really helped me at Burley and the fence I was worried about at Burley was the trout hatchery and I couldn't really even see a route through that combination of fence, high fences until I saw Chris. So I'll definitely be walking the course with Chris. And to be honest, I actually quite like walking the course on my own a couple of times as well, just quietly, um, not having too many outside influences taking the minute markers and just assessing it on my own. So hopefully a combination of that, Chris Bartle, and also Venetia Chamberlain, who's a great mate and sort of his unofficial owner. Uh, she has walked every course with me since his B100 days six, seven years ago. So she'll definitely walk the course with me as well. And she knows him as well as I do. Do you set yourself targets to aim for during a big event? I didn't really have a target for Burley uh, because I'd had a slightly interrupted competition prep, um, not the horse, but I'd fallen off a couple of weeks before, so in a way I was just pleased to be there. I'd love to think that he could be in the top 20 at Burley, uh, sorry, at Badminton this year. Um, I'd be aiming to better his dressage score of 32. I'd like to go quicker cross country as well. So a top 20 performance, I reckon, on our, on our day, on our week, could be well within his range. What events will Hunter compete at in preparation? Well, we've sort of got our plan in place now. He will start off at Treasel Down for an open intermediate run at the beginning of March. I think that's Thursday, the 7th of March. It's an event he knows well. It's local to his owners. He goes quite a lot. So a nice straightforward run there. And his big run is going to be in the Grantham Cup to see IC three star, except now it's called a four star S. Um, and that's at Belton. And that's the end of March. It's a big atmosphere there. It's a big course. It's really testing. And I suspect that he and most of the other badminton man horses will be having a prep run there. The only slightly complicated thing is that that is five weeks still until badminton. That, uh, Belton is quite early this year, 
So it might be that we put an entry into somewhere like Burnham Market or Western Park just to give him another run three weeks before. Um, we'll, we'll pay that by ear. He'll also do plenty of jumping and plenty of galloping right after badminton. Are you superstitious at events? Uh, I try not to be too superstitious. I try to actually uh, stay as chilled as I can, just treat it like it's any other event, like it's at home. Um, I feel a bit nervous in the run up to badminton because anything can go wrong and you're sort of counting down day by day. Um, so not superstitious, but just trying to tell myself not to change anything in our system or do anything different, but at the same time, I'm trying to improve as well. Any lucky charms, lucky socks? It's a really boring answer, but I don't, I don't think I have got too many um, lucky charms. I've got a cross-country t-shirt that I quite like riding in, but I actually forgot that at Burn and left it at home, so it's probably really not too much of a good luck thing. Uh, but really, uh, it sounds cheesy, but rather than having a, anything in particular as an object, it's just keeping a good team around you and having good health and the same people that know you and can support you and know your strengths and your weaknesses. What will be your aim after badminton? Well, with him, he'll obviously have a little bit of a break after badminton. Hopefully, you know, he'll have gone well. Hopefully he can deserve a few weeks in the field. Um, and then we'll see, we could pick him up and go to Burnley again. I'm conscious how much it takes uh, out of these horses doing these big four stars. We never really know how they're going to come out the other side. So, you know, at the moment, it'd be nice to go to Burnley. It'd be nice maybe to do Nations Cup in the summer, perhaps or somewhere like uh, in Ireland or France. But at the moment, I'm not trying to see too far beyond badminton. What does competing at badminton mean to you? Well, it means a massive amount to me. It's event I've always wanted to do, but more than that, I went to school in Tetbury down the road. I fell in love with eventing because my parents used to go to badminton and I used to go every single year. I don't think I've ever not been to a badminton since I was born. So it, it, it's the home of eventing and I can't wait. You know, I hear the stories of riding under the arch the first time into the park. So it will mean a huge, huge deal. It's been my biggest ambition is to go well there. Uh, so a lot, but equally I'm trying to switch that off, turn that off, and as I keep saying, just treat it like any other event at the same time. Entries are now open. Have you done yours? I haven't done mine, so maybe I'm being a bit superstitious there. It just feels very early on still, so I've said to his owners and to myself that I'll enter him after he's had his first run at Tweed's Bank. Uh, so I'll enter him probably about the 10th of March. I think entries close about the 11th, maybe the 15th. So I'll, um, I'll enter. It's just a little bit too early, so I'm probably being a bit superstitious there. Thank you very much. Good luck, Tom, and um, thank, thank you, you. for the Equestrian. Thank you for coming.